There's some people who are very timely and understand what's happening. And I want to give you a perspective from a world point of view about how one man, very highly respected, gives you a view of what they see happening in the world and money. But before we do that, I want to go to James. We're going to go to the fifth chapter, which is so foundational in understanding wealth, powerful people, and what it means in their lives and how God views it. Okay, we're living in a time where a lot of this is just, it's, it's, it's so key in how God has put it in his word. But it says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl, for your miseries are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver are corroded, and the corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures for the last days. You know, it's so true that many, many millionaires and billionaires are around the globe today. They've made tremendous amounts of wealth. And if you read the 28th chapter of Ezekiel, you'll see that a lot of this wealth is accumulated on negotiations and trading. These people who are wise traders in negotiations, these are the people who, in their wisdom, global earthly wisdom, manufactured circumstances which have made them massive amounts of money. And today, now that they have piles and piles of money, God looks down at it all and saying, well, what does it mean to me? Money and an eternal realm all belongs to God. And if you really think about that, it means very little, except that this is what would happen in the last days. I mean, we look at, and I don't cast stones on guys like Warren Buffett and Bill Gates and uh, George Soros. These are multi-billionaires who have made tons and tons of money some, one of the people live very modestly, one of the others has got a very philanthropical heart, and the other one is just taking advantage of circumstances. But all three of these people have a common element. How do they know the Lord? Or do they know the Lord? And the same thing might be said of us out in that viewing audience. As we mention all this, do you know the Lord? But. The man here is Nouriel Rubini, and I think we've mentioned him a time or two in the past, but he is today one of the highly respected global economists that understands what's going on, and they accept him for what he forecasted in previous years ahead is coming to pass today. There are some men in God's family who have done the same thing, maybe not with this kind of visibility. This man has some tremendously strong worldly academic credentials. As stock markets headed off a cliff again last week, and this article is dated the 26th of October, closely followed by currencies, and as the meltdown threatened entire countries such as Hungary and Iceland, one voice was in demand above all others through this whole thing. It's who they call Dr. Doom, and they might say this is some of us prophecy teachers, all we are are doomsdayers. But no, it's all a forecasting of what will be happening before the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This man is not speaking from that perspective, but we at this desk and others alike who do similar things are preparing you if you want to be prepared for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. And this is where your hope should be. The hope shouldn't be in the dollars that you, you've accumulated or in the wealth you've accumulated. Goes on, this guy says, for years, Dr. Doom toiled in relative obscurity as a New York University economics professor under his alias, Nouriel Rubini. But after making a series of uncannily accurate predictions about the global meltdown, Rubini has become the prophet of his age. Jetting around the world, dispensing his advice and latest prognostications to politicians and businessmen desperate to know what will happen next. You know, God knows the answer to that. Uh, 
uh, in my view on the first one, at this point the debate is not anymore whether we're going to have a hard landing or a soft landing, but rather on how hard the hard landing is going to be. I agree with Mr. Zandi, we're already in a recession. When you look at the variety of macroeconomic indicators, the economy starts to contract sometime in December. And a, a rising number of economy, economists now are suggesting that actually this recession is going to be relatively shallow, two quarters, Q1 and Q2, and then a recovery economic growth. My view of it is actually that this recession is going to be much more severe, longer, and protracted than just two quarters. I expect this recession might last uh, at least four quarters and possibly even more than that. If you look at the last two recessions in 1990, 1991, and 2001, they lasted almost three quarters, uh, uh, eight months each. And in my view, the conditions in the financial market and economy compared to the last two recessions are worse. And that's why I believe this recession actually is going to be much longer, at least four quarters, if not six. There are at least three dimensions in which I think that the condition in the macroeconomy and financial market are worse today than they were in the previous uh, two recessions in the United States. And that's why I believe this recession is going to be more severe and more protracted. First uh, reason is that we are experiencing right now the worst housing recession since the Great Depression. If you're willing to spend some time, you can see all this. You know, we, we, we can offer, and we'll probably comment on some of this as time allows, but it says, and for many answers to this crisis, while the economic sun was shining, most other economists scoffed at Rubini and his predictions of imminent disaster. They dismissed his warnings that the subprime mortgage disaster would trigger a financial meltdown. They could not quite believe his view that the U.S. mortgage giants Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac would collapse and that the investment bank would be crushed as the world headed for a long recession. Now, all that being said, if you took the book of Leviticus and read the 25th and 26th chapter, understanding a few other things, you would see how God has talked about a cancellation of debt that happens on long-term processes. And he refers to a 50-year cycle. In this case, from bottom to top, it's probably more like 65 years because we have done so much to prevent it. But the book of Leviticus talks about debt being canceled. And what's happening now? All kinds of debts are being canceled because people no longer have the ability to pay their debts. Debts may have, in this country, have gone out of control. We look at the, the national debt that we have here just crossing the $10 trillion mark and going up every day. And God, in his wisdom, says because of man's human nature, we provide this cycle so that we can eliminate all that and get a fresh start because the burden becomes too excessive. Well, we have prevented it and the excessiveness has created such a global disaster right now, none of us really know what to do. Yet all these predictions and more came true. Few are laughing now. What does Rubini think will happen next? Rather worryingly, in London last Thursday, he predicted what hundreds of hedge funds will go bust and the stock market may soon have to shut down. All we're saying, don't panic. Put your heart and trust in the Lord, let him lead and guide your life. This is the time to really get on your knees fast and let God deal with you.